I'm back. It's time for a Strixhaven School of Mages 100% complete, 100% accurate card review. And in this, we'll not only be talking about exactly how the mechanics work in the set, but if you have, I don't know, maybe been a little curious about what you should spend your wild cards on, perhaps financial decisions that you want to make before getting a chance to play, this is the card review that you should use in order to make those decisions. Because I haven't been wrong yet. Grey Merchant of Asphodel, 0 out of 5, and we've never seen it played since I gave that decree. Thieves Guild Enforcer, I, I, I think I recall calling that card pretty bad, and indeed, it's the worst card in Demir Rogues, uh, one of the most popular decks in the format. So, as we like to say at the start of these, I want to stress, uh, one, card reviews are for fun, if you're taking it too seriously. I don't know, tattoo my face on your forehead. Um, If you're here to have fun, good. And if you want me to change my review at any point in time, feel free to do what Spurgetron did earlier. Gift a pile of subs, and this will give you one re-review redemption at any point. And at me when you do that, please at me. At me when that occurs, so that way I know exactly how you want me to change the review and at what time. But once again, you can only do this once, right? Uh, can we spend honor to review? Absolutely not, White Mage. Honor is a completely nonsensical value. Channel points are only used for uh, irresponsible gambling. All right, Joe Locke says, does my 10 from before count? Ah, I thought you'd never ask Joe Locke. Absolutely, absolutely. First card, Academic Probation, one in a white. It is a lesson card, which I know how it works. A lesson card is a card that uh, you can put in your sideboard, and if you cast a card that says learn, you can use the learn keyword to put one of those lesson cards into the hand, right? So the thing that's kind of weird about lessons and learning and all this stuff is if you look at cards like Brazen Borrower or Lovestruck Beast or uh, Fae of Wishes, these are cards where each side looks eh. Like for instance, Stomp is two mana to deal two damage. When we have Shock, that's one mana to deal two damage. So like it's easy to look at an adventure card initially and not properly evaluate the left and the right side because the value of the card is that you get to do both of those things, not just one. So with a card that has learn on it and a lesson card like this, like, let's read this. Choose one. Choose a non-land card. Opponents can't cast spells with a chosen name until your next turn. You spend two mana to do that. Choose target non-land permanent until your next turn. It can't attack or block, and its activated abilities can't be activated at sorcery speed. This looks terrible. I'm going to give it a 0 out of 5, but the reason I'm giving it a 0 out of 5 in all formats is that um, this to me feels like the like a half of an adventure card, you know what I mean? If you said, ooh, I'm main decking a 2 mana card that doesn't remove something and costs as much as a removal spell, I would say it's terrible. So we're going to start this review off strong and give this a 0 out of 5 because honestly, like, just just run black instead of white, put in a 2 mana removal spell, and be happier. Isn't this great? Isn't this incredible? And choose a non-land card name. Opponents can't cast spells with a chosen name until your next turn. Wizards of the Coast needs to implement deck lists when I queue up in best of one with my meme shit on ladder so I can use this accurately. Yeah, just run black, right? You see this white card? It's two mana to not remove. Ah, oh, there it is. All right, this review is going great. Ageless Guardian. It's a 1-4 for one and a white that reminds me of Demon Souls that I played all last week. This one gets a 5 out of 5. Um, this card's terrible. Here's the thing. Um, this is a Spirit Soldier. doesn't even have good tribals, all this stuff. Um, and I, I might play Demon Souls tomorrow. Maybe not. I, I don't know. I haven't even figured out what I'm going to do tomorrow. Because typically Wizards of the Coast has a pre-release event. They have a early access for streamers event on Wednesdays that I look forward to every single set release. And not only did they um, not... They, they canceled that last minute for tomorrow. But they also said they're discontinuing it here forevermore. And I didn't get an email about it. I found it out on Twitter and thought it was a punk for like... <laughs> like 30 minutes <laughs> so i don't know I, I think that maybe there's something technical going on in the back end or there's something logistical going on like i have no idea i have no idea all i know is that this reminds me of a game that i might play tomorrow all right so one four uh this is a limited card and even then you're embarrassed to have it beaming defiance this is you anytime i make a point one in a white instant target creature you control gets plus two plus two and gains hexproof until end of turn oh 
Ooh, I'm going to give this a 2 out of 5. The reason being that um, Hexproof is a pretty valuable card at instant speed in Constructed. And this is really what I care about, is standard Constructed. So, I mean, the, the, the Beaming Defiance, um, the fact that it has Hexproof, things like Indestructible, keywords like this, I have found to be a really nice piece to have for various Aura-type decks. Um, hell, maybe even the Orzhov Auras. <laughs> I want to use some of this stuff. Well, I don't know. Maybe the fact that it's two mana makes it way more terrible. I don't know. Here's the thing. When you're in standard, standard, you have such a limited set of cards that finding four copies of a Hexproof card is good. And if you can go to eight copies of Hexproof card, really good. In uh, Historic, there are so many one mana white saves. Why would you run this instead of those? Eh. So I'm going to give it a two out of five because I'm a, I'm a standard boy. And uh, as you'll see, zero, five... Two. Ooh, Daynon really looks like he's giving a fair valuation to these things because he's used three out of the five numbers. <gasps> and now he's used four out of five. And <gasps> oh my god! And that's how induction works. Clever looming answer. <laughs> one white for a zero one, human wizard, magecraft. Whenever you cast or copy an instant or sorcery spell, clever looming answer gets a plus two, plus two until end of turn. Um. I think this card is terrible. I think this card is absolute garbage. Nitro Viper, 2000, gives us five subs. Hey, remember to at me if you want to re-roll the review at any point in time. Mwah. Oh my god, thank you very much, Nitro Viper. Here's the thing about Clever Lumi Mancer. Do you guys remember this card called Akum Hellhound? Do you remember this fucking one? Remember Akum Hellhound? Remember this one? That was like a zero one landfall. You give it plus two plus two. You have to you have to cast a whole sorcery. And some of you are just like, oh my god, Ugh. what? The oh, I drank coffee. These are coffee grounds. I looked and I was like, I'll be dead within the hour. There's black crumbly mold looking things at the bottom of my coffee. No, it's just coffee grounds. It's great. All right. By the way, cat sheriff on the mug. You can buy it in my store. Sirocco says, easier to get multiple spells than land, especially in Boros. Oh, Sirocco SC, you are mistaken. If you are trying to tell me that you are going to run this card in any Boros list... Wait, is Feather in Standard? Ooh, I might need to get the hell out of here fast. Wow. Here's the thing. Some people backpedal. Not the right thing to do. Never backpedal. What you do is you just plow forward. You go, oh, is Feather in the set? Okay, Combat Professor, and you do this. Feather's long gone. Thanks, Ante Han. Let me tell you, this is an absolute 0 out of 5 in Standard. I cannot think of a single archetype, a single way to play at all with the clever Lumi Mancer. It's even hard to say. There's too many emphasized syllables. And here's the reasoning. Um, technically, you can cast multiple spells in a turn, whereas more often you can only play a single land in a turn. But as someone that is an absolute standard dum-dum, um, I, I don't know. I Like, Boros for this? Like, why is it not an is it? If there's something like this that were an is it, I would be trying to make it work. Um, yeah, so I don't know. If I'm trying to be more sincere, which I hate doing, if I'm trying to be more sincere here, I, I allege that I might give it like maybe a I'll just give it a zero out of one as a form of self-referentiation it just seems against every all my intuition for for what white decks do combat professor three and a white for a flying bird cleric already it feels good Flying, 2-3. At the beginning of combat on your turn, target creature you control gets plus 1, plus 0, oh, and gains vigilance until end of turn. Oh my god, this is a really good limited card. Wow. Oh, it's a really good limited card. But I play Constructed. That's a 0 out of 5. What am I going to pay 4 mana for a bird that does nothing on the turn that it's played? Oh, Sean, give another creature vigilance. We don't even build boards in standard. We just expect them to be wiped again and again and again and again endlessly. All right, defend the campus. Three and a white. Choose one. Ooh, look at this art. Ooh, hoo -hoo. there's some very tentacled inspiration here. Four mana, choose one. Creatures you control get plus one, plus one until end of turn. Destroy target creature with power four or greater. Oh, I love this card in limited. This is great in limited. 
because destroy target creature with power four or greater, you'll often run zero or one of these. It's like a 23rd card in a draft. Um, but then the creatures you control get plus one, plus one until end of turn makes me lean more towards one. <laughs> I really think I've given maybe the least compelling evaluation of something ever, probably. Have you... <laughs> if I describe anything else like that... Wow, no, yeah, Susan's great. I, I think she's this kind of person that you would enjoy hanging out with zero or one time. Uh, but the fact that, um, you know, you might have a shared interest in Dota means you should hang out with her one time. Um, good lord, I mean, that's just like the most... Wow, yeah, let's give this one a zero out of five and get the hell out of here. I really do like this, I really do like this. I really do like this card quite a bit in, in Limited. Detention Vortex. <laughs> This actually sounds like a name that's trying to make fun of how things are named in Magic the Gathering. That's so good. Because <laughs> Detention is a very, you know, I watch the CW and the protagonist, who's clearly in their early 30s, has been given detention and they have to use words that they don't use because they're not from that generation. So they say stuff like, oh, bummer. Oh, this is not dab worthy. That sort of shit. And then you just hurl in Vortex into here, which is like the absolute ultimate kind of only in fantasy. You would never see the word Vortex in any other location outside of sci-fi and fantasy fiction. Vortex. White. An enchantment aura. Enchant non land permanent. Enchanted permanent can't attack or block, and its activated abilities can't be activated. Oh. Destroy detention Vortex. Only your opponents may activate this ability, and only as a sorcery. What? What? Wait a minute. Oh, Mystic Sounds says, can we clip that day nine dab? I need it for things. Yeah, of course you can. This is the world of social media. Respecting someone's boundaries or privacy is not how the world works anymore. Do whatever the fuck you want with me at any point, monetize it, and then try to quote some garbage you heard in Silicon Valley of, apologize, don't ask for permission. You know what I'm saying? One of those kinds of things. Man. Yeah, just clip it, make, put it on a shirt, tattoo it onto your forehead, all that good stuff. Detention Vortex. Destroy it. Detention Vortex. Only your opponents may activate this ability. Okay, this is NFT. Yeah, look, I would like if each person who's viewing live puts an NFT both on the review of this card, on the dab, and on each other. That would be really, really great. Um... What are we talking about? Here's what's interesting to me about this. This is a one mana, you can't block this turn. And then your opponent has to spend mana on their own turn to get it out of the way. So this is one of the very first sort of binding effects that I'm kind of interested in and constructed. I'm, I might give this a two. I might give this a two because it's just, this is more of a sideboard worthy one, I think, like maybe a one or something. Like if you are up against a lot of people that have like the big creature to block the, the path for your little ones, if you can detention vortex and get in there, uh, that seems pretty good. Um, there is Maul of the Skyclaves, which seems like an even better one. An even better one. But, man, it, it's just... It's so cheap. It's so cheap. Oh, wow. All right. Click. Dang it. Oh, I didn't give this... One out of five. Devastating Mastery. Oh, that's me broadcasting right now. That's how I see myself. Am I not a monument to vanity or what? Devastating Mastery. Two, a white, a white, a white, and a white. Sorcery. You may pay two and a white and a white rather than pay the spell's mana cost. If the two and a white and a white cost was paid, an opponent chooses up to two non-land permanents they control and return them to their owner's hand. Destroy all non-land permanents. Mm-mm. Mm-mm. No, 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 no. You don't ever want to run this card. This is a terrible, awful, no good, very bad card. It actually is our very first negative one out of five. The Black Death says amazing in Commander. That doesn't what? And, and it's also quite powerful in Monopoly. What do you th who do you think I am, Black Death? Like, this is a card that I am trying to consider running in any of the archetypes I think are interesting, like Jeskai Control, like Naya Ramp, like stuff like this. Here's the thing: this is Shatter. Except you don't kill all the shit. This is a worse Ondo Inversion. Ondo Inversion only takes a single white, and it's a land. 
Oh, Deadly Ginger says changes to five out of five. You got it, Deadly Ginger. Deadly Ginger is is <laughs> redeeming our very first reroll on the review. No problem, Deadly Ginger. I really like Devastating Mastery. I think it's at least a two of in a Jeskai Control deck, and here's why. Jeskai Control is a list that's often about trying to buy time because the later you get in the game, the more powerful you are. You can use effects like um, the Ultimatum. You can use things <laughs> like um, Shark Typhoon Hardcast. Uh, you can even Hardcast a Godzilla. So a lot of times there is a little bit of a tricky pickle on turn six, making sure that the board is in good enough shape on turn seven. So the fact that Devastating Mastery hits Planeswalkers Enchantments. I know a lot of people have been losing to Jun Sacrifice decks in Historic. I think this is the perfect card for a three-color Jeskai list to run with fucking four white. Who would ever run this terrible card? Who? This is, a, this is the shittiest card. I'm sorry. This is probably the best card we've seen yet. And as always, we can't backpedal. We just have to move on. Oh, that was a tough one. Oh, Deus Macarena just gifted uh, five subs. Great to have you here, Deus Macarena. It's wonderful to see you. Um, uh, and once again, re-roll. And please make sure you at me multiple times to get my attention if you want the re-roll. All right. Dueling Coach, three and a white. When Dueling Coach enters the battlefield, put a plus one, plus one counter on target creature. You can pay a bunch, put a plus one, plus one counter on each creature you control with a plus one, plus one counter on it. Um, these types of swelly bears seem like a very reasonable card to have in a draft. Drafts, I think the draft formats have just been A plus out of 10, stunningly good for the past, God, like two and a half years. I have never disliked a draft format except for Throne of Eldraine when everyone was milling me out. And this card is expensive as hell in Limited, but again, there's a lot of stalling that occurs in Limited. Um, and so having like one of these is a nice way, is just like a potential way to eventually get there. Um, um, and that's all. We give it a 0 out of 5 in Constructive. Eager first year. Oh, let me guess. You had a 4.0 GPA in high school, and now you're in college, and let me guess. You think that you're really smart. Guess what? I'm an adult. I don't even know what my grades were in college. In fact, when I went to grad school, I never even looked at my grades. I could have barely squeaked by. I don't fucking know. You know how many times someone has tuned into my stream and wanted to know my GPA? Zero. Oh my gosh, you can totally tell. This, like, <laughs> Occasional Warlock says, it's us, chat. <laughs> Eager first time sub. Hello, I'm here to join Day9 TV's chat, and I'm, I think I'm going to be capable of great things. And you know what? You are. We're happy to have you. Magecraft. One and a white for a 2 2. Whenever you cast or copy an instant or sorcery spell, your first year gets plus one, plus oh until end of turn. Oh, let me guess, Lefowens and Sirocco, all, all you people that love the Lumi Mommy. You're all probably saying, oh, plus two, plus two. Oh, and plus one, plus one. Oh my god, I'm going to cast so many spells to be able to swing for like eight or nine damage on a turn before my entire hand is gone. Lumi Mommy? Yeah, I, I couldn't quite remember the name of the card, but I remember it had a lot of M's, and so does the word Mommy. Insight into how this brain works. Uh, it doesn't seem good in Constructed at all. Two mana, two twos... You just need way more upside. You need something that's really, really strong in um, in constructed something like the uh, oh my god the three one did, hall hallowed fountain bear. What's, why is my brain unable to retrieve a single name for a single card? Uh, hallowed hallowed blade bear. What the, the three one that taps and is indestructible? Stop withholding the name. Hall Seasoned Hallow Blade. Thank God. <laughs> you need cards that are that good and constructed. Alright, so Eager First Year is not it. Zero out of five. Elite Spellbinder. Ah, yes. This is a little bit how I imagine myself when it's Friday night. I've just cracked open the first beer of the weekend and it's time to grind television. I've been in quarantine long enough that I no longer watch TV. I grind it. Just, ah, like right there. Oh, is that Paulo Vitor Dama de Rosa? Of course it is. For any of you who didn't know, when I was interviewing PVDDR at the World Championships when he'd won first place, first of all, the greatest interviewee I have ever had the pleasure of holding a microphone to their mouth for. 
These sentences are really getting away from me today. Um, best person I've ever interviewed. Just this wonderful... Thanks to everyone who supported. Thanks to Wizards for doing the tournament scene. Uh, uh, spoke to the Portuguese um, magic community in Portuguese and was was actually happy. I don't know how often you guys have watched StarCraft players in the early StarCraft 2 days when they're just like, I have won the tournament and I'm happy to have showed good games. Mm. Oh, oh, please. Um, just an absolute stunning human being. This is great. So, Paul Vitor Domdorosa. Two and a white for a creature, human, cleric. Three and a one. Flying. When elite spell binder enters the battlefield, look at target op opponent's hand. You may exile a non-land card from it. For as long as that card remains exiled, this owner may play it? A spell cast this way, it costs two more to cast? Oh, this is a five. Oh my... Oh my god. Wow. Ooh, it's really good. This is a 5 out of 5. The reason being, a 3-1 flyer is very nice, right? Joe Lux says, please change to a negative 1 out of 5. Let me finish my review, and then we'll absolutely do that. Um, uh, okay, my, my probably more accurate review is 4 or 5. I think that the fact that this is a white card that reveals the opponent's hand is pretty remarkable. It's a 3-1 flyer for 3. Um, there's a lot of white decks, like white weenie aggro decks, that are often trying to leverage um, going wide and going under someone with the turn one, two, and three plays that can get countered by sweepers or strong two-for-one value cards. And so what Elite Spellbinder effectively allows an aggro deck to do is to play a one-drop and then play two one-drops and then Spellbinder, boom, delay the key two-for-one-ing card. Um, Darth Hoffman says, isn't this just a worse, a worse Rydane, though? Oh, Rydane is, first of all, only increasing the cost of some stuff, and you don't know it, and three damage is r relevantly much more than two. Um, Dire Depression 96 is also a cleric. Yeah, yeah, I suppose so. I would still give it high ratings, ignoring its creature type. Um... So, I mean, the fact that you can just see the opponent's hand is just is just astounding. It's just astounding. Deus Macarena says, card stays exiled even if um, Paulo Vitor Domodorosa dies. That's true. That's true. This is what's really, really sick. Um, yeah, I, I really love this card. Now, Joe Luck, you wanted to redeem this? You want me to just shit on this card? All right. All right, Elite Spellbinder. Two and a white. It looks at the opponent's hand. It exiles a card. Oh, they can still play it, though? Okay, so... So you, you're basically, instead of cat, it's a worse riding, really is what it is. Like this card, it's a 3-1, uh, which is a stat line that at instant speed, like as a Brazen Borrower, maybe I'd be happy with, but sorcery speed to be able to delay a card that they're going to be able to cast anyway. I would, I would rather pass this and run something powerful. Uh, I'd probably want to run something more powerful, like an Eager First Year, or if I'm able to afford it, a clever Lumimancer. Isn't this a sophisticated way to reevaluate the card and continue to dump on all the people that think that this card is good? Ugh. Yeah, this this card, it dies to stomp. It's not good enough. You want three toughness uh, flyers that are defensively statted if you're doing a white weenie deck. Pfft. Next card, expel two and a white for exile target tap creature. I like exiling things. <laughs> Is this... This, by the way, this is both the look and expression I have before the very first time I see my friends for the first time in a year. Well, I know you're excited to see me for lunch, but I want to let you know I've gotten quite large in the last year. I mean, this is... And everyone's like, look, there's a strange person in Sean's house. No, that's... Golly, that's actually me. Uh, and so, because I feel self-conscious looking at this, I'm going to have to give it uh, a, somewhat of a low rating. Exile target tapped creature. Tapped is pretty mediocre in Constructed, especially the way that um, a lot of um, aggro decks will never have the opportunity to do that. Um, some control lists are interested in single target exile effects. For instance, Seal Away was a very, very popular card in Control. I actually think that Expel might be a pretty reasonable 
pretty reasonable card to have in a control list. I think that's quite nice. Exile target tap creature. Yeah, I mean, this is one of the reasons why you don't want to run fucking this garbage. You don't want to run Elite Spellbinder because if you had Rydain, Rydain plays around Expel perfectly. Um, three mana is a lot, though. Yeah, yeah, I think I might give it a two in Constructed. I think in Limited, this is a perfectly fine card. I'd give it a three or four in Limited. It, it is three and it is conditional, but, you know, it's Limited. There's going to be a lot of tapped creatures. Tetrin says that is one sad elephant. What the f... Oh, the card! Oh, oh, oh. 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 Guiding Voice, one white. A sorcery. Put a plus one, plus one counter on target creature. Learn. Hey, by the way, this is this is you and your significant other watching a Day 9 Daily. Oh! He's just so wise and smart. I love it. Card's trash. I wouldn't run it in a deck even if you paid me money to do it. Um, so put a counter on a thing at sorcery speed. Learn. We can reveal some learned cards, but we've only seen one, which is a card that deactivates a single non-land permanent for a turn. Oh, my God. God, I don't know. I suppose that this is going to be a fine card in Limited. I suppose it's going to be a 3 out of 5 in Limited or some shit because it puts a counter on things. We've already seen that there's a little bit of counters matter stuff from the dueling coach. Um, and you get a little bit of card advantage slurping things from the sideboard into the main board. I actually think I'd probably give this a 3 out of 5 in Limited. It seems quite good. Parabola says Magecraft and Cheap Spell might be relevant. It might be, but unfortunately, Parabola, we haven't seen a single good Magecraft white creature yet. It, are these not the greatest card reviews? I love doing these card reviews. I think it's because I enjoy being right. Leonin Light Scribe, one and a white for a cat cleric. Meow! For a 2-2 with Magecraft, whenever you cast or copy an instant or sorcery spell, creatures you control get plus one, plus one until end of turn. Fuck. Wow. Meow. Um, uh, um, uh. I don't know, man. I don't think that this is going to be good. I still don't think it's going to be good. I don't... Here's the thing. Let me share with you a little bit about myself. Let me open my heart to you. It's a two-drop. It's not legendary, so you can have many things. Oh, uh, Bubblegum Trace says, what does Magecraft do? Magecraft is triggered whenever someone casts or copies an instant or sorcery spell. Do you guys hear my roommate? Just, or not my roommate, my, uh, my neighbor just... Belton singing so loud. Anyways. Yeah. I, I, okay, here's the thing. If I am a, like, white weenie deck, I, I feel a little weird trying to run a lot of small instances and sorceries. I don't know. This is a bizarre kind of, like, my brain doesn't, it doesn't work well with this. I mean, there is the, um, you know, the feather style decks, but I don't know. I would run this stuff and put. I don't know. I don't know what to make of this. So I'm frightened. I'm going to give it a zero out of five. Mavinda, student's advocate, two and a white is. Oh my god, Mavinda's the bird. Oh shit, yeah, legendary creature bird advisor for a mythic rare two three flyer, for zero. You may cast target instant or sorcery card from your graveyard this turn. If that spell doesn't target a creature you control, it costs eight more to cast this way. If that spell would be put in your graveyard, exile it instead. So, okay. So this bird helps bring back from the dead cheap spells to cast on your babies, such as this baby. And 
it costs eight more to cast if you do it on anything else. So, for instance, if I was like a blue white deck and I had a counter spell in the graveyard, if I wanted to use a two mana counter spell to counter something, it would instead cost ten. I feel a little bit like the bird in this picture that's like, why do I have a tenured track professor at a university? I I'm a bird. I have to I have to knock on my on my wall one second. I use this ball to knock on the wall. Might not be loud for you, but it's very loud for me. Yeah, I don't know. Um yeah, so so this this is clearly the game is trying to beg me to do mage crafting babies with a Mavinda bird to try to like Mavinda assistance with things like guiding voice oh we're gonna learn so much from this bird uh, but it i'm gonna give this a temporary one out of five i bet someone is gonna try to build a deck out of this but i think mavinda the student's advocate um is as effective at advocating for students as most people in academia uh so i'm gonna give this a one out of five Pilgrim of the Ages, two and a white. For a spirit that's two, one. Pilgrim of the Ages, end of the battlefield. You may search your library for a basic planes card, reveal it, and put it into your hand. Oh, return Pilgrim of the Ages from your graveyard to your hand. Huh. Wow. Well, this is a weird little card. Huh. I mean, it's expensive for find a um, planes. It can return to the hand. White ramp and limited. So this is kind of like Birth of Miletus. It's a little bit like Birth of Miletus. I don't see a good use for it. I'd rather just run another planes. Zero. Zero out of five. Pillar Drop Rescuer for four and a white for Spirit Cleric. Ah, yes. This is me. This is me right here in YouTube. And this is you drifting off to sleep. Don't worry. Let's just tuck you in. I'm going to sleep just nice. I know I have a very soothing voice. Well, flying. When Pillar Drop Rescuer enters a battlefield, return target creature card with mana cost three or less from your graveyard to your hand. This is a limited card. You don't run it in Constructed. If you do... That's okay, because I'm just going to make sure you sleep nice and tight. Professor of Symbology, one and a white. When Professor of Symbology enters the battlefield, learn. Again, we're going to need to revisit this card because I don't know. I don't know what you can learn. I don't know what to learn. I have no idea, right? No idea. I mean, it's a two-one for one. I suppose that this actually seems like a somewhat reasonable. Here's the thing. I feel a little bit like this could be a card that goes into some kind of weird white weenie where your whole sideboard's a bunch of learn cards. Because remember, it says you may reveal a lesson card from outside the game if you're in a competitive format. Outside the game means you sideboard. And I believe, and correct me if I'm wrong, but recently, um, Wizards changed it so that if you're playing best of one, your sideboard is seven. Isn't that right? Isn't that correct? Yeah, so... I can imagine some sort of like mono white best of one bunch of lessons inside clickety clack sort of thing but i don't know i don't know one out of five tentatively we have to see what else we can learn whoa reduce to memory oh my god what a what beautiful art oh that's stunning one and double white exile target non-land permanent its controller creates a three two red and white spirit creature token Oh, you can, like, learn about reducing someone into a 3-2 spurt. Hmm. 
Zero. It's a sorcery speed, three mana, exile a non-land permanent. It's expensive. They get a creature. I don't want it. I don't want it. Now, Deus Macarena says lessons are just bad adventures, or am I wrong? Here's the thing. Adventures, I think, are very, 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 very disproportionately strong. Like, ridiculously strong. You know what I'm saying? Um, and so, saying something is a bad adventure is saying, like, uh, I am, I'm like a billionaire but less wealthy. Like, yeah, of course. Most people, places, and things are that. Um, Hitzel says you are disproportionately strong. <laughs> yeah. All right. I don't know. I don't. I haven't seen a lesson I've liked yet. Secret rendezvous. You and target opponent each draw three cards. Huh. Well, that's a weird one. Oh, that's a fun one. Oh, how do I? How do I put this into some bullshit? White has card draw. Narset. Yeah, not not in standard. Not in standard. Ah, yes, Untown says, too bad Narset went the way of the feather. Yeah, so, like, Secret Rendezvous seems uh, terrible in all ways. Commander players everywhere rejoice because it's another way to continue to make your broken BS be more broken in BS. And that sounds pretty fun. Um, I was reduced to memory of zero? Yeah, so here's an interesting question. Interesting question from Engine of Creation. How is reduced to memory of zero? Skyclave Apparition is similar and super strong. Skyclave Apparition is, I play the Skyclave Apparition, and then you have to do something about my Skyclave Apparition to get something that is less good than what I exiled. This is, spend three mana, I don't get a 2-2. Two -two. I also don't have a, a target that you have to then deal with, and you immediately get a 3-2. So, for that reason, it's just wildly substantially worse. And even then, Skyclave Apparition is not run uh, tre tremendously much. Semesters end. Uh-oh, I see a lot of text. Three and a white for an instant exile. Any number of target creatures and or planeswalkers use control at the beginning of the next end step. Return each of them to the battlefield under its owner's control. Each of them enters the battlefield with an additional plus one plus one counter on it if it's a creature. And an additional loyalty counter on it if it's a planeswalker. Oh, this one is juicy. This one is very, very juicy. Oh, what was the rating on Secret Rendezvous? Oh, a zero, of course. I'm sorry, it's a zero. Semester's end. Okay, so this is nice. Exile any number of target creatures and or planeswalkers that you control. So what happens is I'm going wide. I'm going wide. I'm smacking you in the face. Here I go. Here I go. And then my opponent casts a sweeper and is like, nah! Shadow's verdict, you see? I'm going to cast ultimatum in two turns, you see? And then you semester's end. This is great. This is very, this is very, very nice. Um, wow. Madrigal says, when will white aggro have four mana up? They'll have four mana up if they want to play around it. Seems very, very nice. Um, the thing that I'm interested in is that it's creatures and planeswalkers. So it makes me wonder if there's some sort of interesting ETB deck that's going to use semesters. And this, I actually think could fit in some other variety of decks. Maybe some Bant lists that run a lot of Enter the Battlefield creatures and other thingies. Some Brighton says, feels as good as a semester being over. Oh my god, I have never experienced a high as big as when the semester's done, as when finals are behind you. Oh my god, you, it feels like justified irresponsibility time, man. It's so good. Uh, Rush says, would this work on your own tokens, or would they be gone permanently? They'd be gone permanently. Uh, permanent, um, um, even, or if the permanent is a token, if it uh, goes into exile, it's just Poof. It's just gone. Yeah, next thought says Skyclave can only exile four cost cards or less. Reduce has no limit. Yeah, doesn't doesn't really matter. I mean, let's be honest. There there are infinitely better removal cards for things that are bigger than this. I mean, th this card is just... It's a one for zero. You spend a card and they do nothing. With Skyclave Apparition, you temporarily remove a card of theirs for a thing, and then they actually have to deal with Skyclave Apparition, so it's a one for one. Anyways...
Yeah, this is great. I'm going to give it a 4 out of 5. Maybe a 3 out of 5 because it's circumstantial. But I love it. I love to see it. It's so good. Yeehaw. I now need to type something. Here we go. I just realized that I completely forgot to eat lunch. I was too excited. The The adrenaline was coursing through my veins and the testosterone as well. Um, did you see a Deus Macarena reroll quest? I didn't. Oh, that's terrible. Oh, God, Deus Macarena. We, we gotta, we gotta, we gotta do it later. We gotta do it later. We're moving on. Show of confidence. One and a white. When you cast a spell... Copy it for each other incident sorcery spell you've cast this turn. You may choose new targets for the copies. Put a plus one plus one counter on target creature. It gains vigilance until end of turn. It's Storm. For any of you who don't know what Storm is, Storm says, whenever you cast a spell, copy it for each other incident sorcery spell you've cast this turn. I see. So what's going to happen is you're going to cast a one-mana thing, a one-mana thing, you're going to cast Show of Confidence, and then you're going to concede because all the Magecraft cards suck. This is a negative 10 out of 5. In fact, I'm offended if any of you try to build a deck around this. This card stinkies. It's stinky winky winkies. Look, you are going to go through so much effort just to try to put several plus one plus one counters on things. Oh my god. I cast this spell? And then I cast this one, and then I cast this one, and then that way when I do this one, I get four plus one plus one counters. Turn five has never felt so orgasmic. Are you kidding me? This card is literally the flaccid version of Storm. Do you realize how insane Storm cards are? Like the historical ones? I mean, it's, it's kind of like the scene in Terminator 2 when Arnold Schwarzenegger is on the minigun. You know, and he's just like, and in the end, like, he still hasn't killed anyone. That's what Show of Confidence is like. <laughs> Elos F, gifted five subs. Nope, this should be a five. This is a good card. You're right, Elos F. Uh, because you gifted five subs, we're going to reroll this. I think Show of Confidence is a terrific example of how Storm is really going to take the huh, meta by Storm. That's a funny joke. I did that on the spot. This is why you're all here. Uh, Show of Confidence, I think... Um, makes sense in a deck that has obviously a lot of one mana cheap defensive spells which white does and it's good to see that white has some powerful mommies to enable it with magecraft so i really think that the goal of this deck is to play some creatures on turn one two and three and then on turn four um get so many plus one, plus one counters on your creatures that your opponents can't help but concede. Oh! There's so many plus one, plus one counters. I don't know what to do. All I run is Heartless Act. So I can't eliminate any of the opposition. Oh, all, 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 the, all the black mages will just switch to eliminate. Okay, yeah, cool. Yeah, so um, Shadowcat says you need to do improv, dude. Shadow Cat, that's what I'm doing right now. I am. D Each one of these is a seven hour improv. That's why I don't look at the cards. Uh, Shadow Cat 91, I'm going to give you a two out of five. Okay? Okay? I'm not going to give you zero because you know what? I like you quite a bit. You're here often. And you uplift my day. But today, I'm telling you, you know. You say, oh, you mean professionally. What do you mean? Look at how many subscriptions we've gotten today. Oh, re-roll? Re-roll Shadowcat? Actually, that's a great point, Shadowcat. I'm going to give you a 5 out of 5, um, according to E.K. Hawkman, Shadowcat. <laughs> you know, this is a good idea. You know, I, what, I, what I'm hearing, what I'm hearing, Shadowcat, is that this is bringing you so much joy. I should do this more often. This is fantastic. Shadowcat types in all caps, I got a rating. And it's a good one. It's 5 out of 5. In fact, it's the same rating as we gave this card. <laughs> Oh my god. <laughs> yeah, I think this card sucks dicks. I'm going to be real with you. I, I, I look at this and it's just like, it's so much work to put several plus one plus one counters on things. Can I be honest? Like, 
there are decks that take infinite turns, okay? And this one is just, you're going to gack your whole hand out to get several plus one, plus one counters. I don't believe it. Ms. Merck says, how dare you say that Shadowcat? Shadowcat's great. I love Shadowcat. Shadowcat's fantastic. Um, I'm sorry, Shadowcat. I was, I was poking fun at you. I apologize. That was any stress incurred. Um, <laughs> like, sincerely, I like really don't want you to feel bad. I like I like being playful, but not at anyone's expense. Um, um, we're gonna we're gonna keep going. We're gonna keep going here. Yeah, I just don't think this is gonna be that good in constructed. This seems very reasonable in limited, not a constructed one. Sparring regiment two and a white for an enchantment. When sparring regiment enters the battlefield, learn. <laughs> I sh I just want to say, I cannot take the grammar of these sentences seriously. When a big bad bear enters the battlefield, comma, learn. Because no one in English speaks that way. Hey, honey, when you go to school today, learn. No one says that. Unless they hate their child. <laughs> and that's a little bit of the tone that I'm getting. When sparring regiment enters the battlefield, learn. Okay, Lumi Mommy. When you attack, put a plus one, plus one counter on target attacking creature and untap it. Really? I feel like I'm going to see a lot of this in week one. And then I'm going to start casting the Ugin. You know what I mean? Like, I don't... I really don't know. You know? I feel like I feel like it's kind of like that guy that lifts weight a lot. To me, lifts weights a lot. And is very aggressive. And they're like, I'm going to get into MMA. And then they get punched in the face. And then they don't do MMA anymore. And they go back to lifting weights and just being sort of aggressive. Like, I think Sparring Regimen is one that makes sense... Um, in, um, limited, but in a constructed format. Mm-mm. Mm-mm. Um. Yeah. Yeah. I, I'm also a little curious. Is whenever you attack, is you me? Or, or is it like, so, like, if I have three things attacking, that means that I attacked. So, it's just one. Dine Online says you is you. Oh, okay. <laughs> Baba is you players, man. Um, look, next time I'm going to read this card, learn. I'm going to give this a zero out of five in Constructed. Loses to Ugin. We, we're going to rate those poorly. Star Pupil. Oh, look at that long neck. Oh, yes. Star Pupil. A single white for a zero zero, star people are unsuited battlefield with a plus one plus one counter on it. When star people dies, put its counters on target creature you control. I am a whole ozolith. Mm. I'm going to lord my achievements over everyone, even when I'm dead. Card's actually pretty good. Card's actually pretty good. Like, card's actually. I think there's something kind of interesting in there. Um, yeah, I, you know, can you read the flavor text? When I'm done here, they'll name entire buildings after me. Yeah, like, like, that didn't happen to me. They didn't, I didn't get done with USC and they created the plot compound for learning. When you enter the plot compound, learn. Like, that. no one's gonna fucking go to the plot compound. Or maybe, maybe there's like a sandwich place called the plot hole. <laughs> I fucking figured it out. I found the funny. I found the funny. And you and I together got there with the power of improvisation. Notify Shadowcat immediately. I think this card's pretty good. Like, I'm always interested in one man of value cards for a white weenie deck. I'm going to give it a three out of five. I can see the merit here. Um... Or I suppose that since we're in a Strixhaven world, I can see demerits here as well. So um, I'm gonna, uh, and I'm gonna give it like a three out of five. I actually think there's something here that I feel like is interesting to me, especially the fact that it's a creature that when it dies keeps growing and stuff like this. Stonebinder is familiar. A single white for a one one. Whenever one or more cards are put into exile during your turn, put a plus one plus one counter on Stonebinder's familiar. Meow. <gasps> oh my god. Is it? I don't believe it. Oh, on this side. Oh my god. Oh my god. Oh my god. 
It's just coffee grounds. I had this conversation with Chad as well. <laughs> yeah, sure. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Remember at the start of this broadcast where I looked inside my water cup and saw grounds in there and was like, gross! My my perfect wife uh, came in with extra coffee and took one look in the mug and was like, ugh, what's in here? <laughs> coffee grounds! For more coffee. Thank you, honey. Oh my god. And look at this. Look at this. We have, we have a delicious... We have a delicious homemade uh, taco salad. Okay, we have we have um, we have some cheese, uh, there's a little, like a thin, wide layer of cheese on the top. But the important one is the um, slow braised shredded chicken in there. That's incredible. So we have guac, we have sour cream. The chicken is unreal. It's incredible. It's incredible. Like I mean, seriously, Brett Ricard, I would run four copies of her in every deck, even if I didn't have the. She, if she was like a red card, runner in mono blue, hundred percent, best card ever. Quantum Stride says, "Pretend healthy food." What are you talking about? No, you know, you know, what pretend healthy food is. Pretend healthy food in America, at least. Pretend healthy food is where you have something horrible for you with a salad on the side. You know what I mean? Kind of like you can get like a mixed salad from McDonald's and it like comes with fries. Like that's, that's fake healthy food. Mmm. Oh my God, that's so good. Yeah, and a Diet Coke. Oh yeah, this is my, this is my burger with blue cheese that I asked for extra lettuce on with lettuce on the side with, you know, crinkle cut fries and a Diet Coke. A granola is the ultimate fake healthy food. Oh my god, right. I have a chocolate marshmallow granola bar. I eat one in place of breakfast and alongside lunch because I'm healthy. It's so good. Yeah, you know, you know what the healthiest thing to do is? To stop fucking eating so much. This is one thing that I learned. In the past year in quarantine, I get stressed and then I eat. And you know what happened? In beginning, okay? Uh, and a lot of times when I'm like, I want to lose weight, you know what I'll do? Stop eating so much. In shrinking, and that and that's it. Like that's it. You know, it's always so it's so weird to me. Like, okay, so I lost a bunch of weight, like two, three years ago. I lost about fifty pounds. And people, oh, Sean, how did you do it? I ran a bunch and stopped eating so much. And I feel like we all know this. And I feel like we all know this. And here's the thing: I'll be the first one to say it. If you are struggling to eat healthy and exercise, you're gaining some weight. That's okay. That is okay. I personally know someone who said, just had a kid, I'm trying to write this damn PhD thesis, and I'm trying to work to pay for it. For every page of my thesis I write, I'm gonna eat a donut. You know what she did? She gained 20 pounds. And she was not six foot four like me, right? Like, she's like a small person, that was a substantial percentage of her weight, right? And then she graduated, has a PhD, raised the kid, lost the weight, and is fine. I think that's fine, and that's totally okay. However, I do want to know, just just exercise you don't eat so much, right? I, think, I, feel like we, I feel like we, I feel like we know. There's not a trick. We know how to do it. And in 2022, I'm going to be hot. I'm going to have done it by then. But for now, um, is there sour cream on here? Oh, yeah, there's a little sour cream. Mm. Mm. Yeah. So, um, we're going to get through white and blue, then we're going to eat. But yeah, let's go back to Stonebinders Familiar 1 for a 1-1. One, one. Whenever one or more cards are put into exile during your turn, put a plus one, plus one counter on Stonebinders Familiar. This ability triggers only once each turn. Oh, rats. So if my opponent foretells, that triggers it. If they cast any adventure card, that triggers it. During your turn. I'm going to give this a zero. 
This is your this is a limited card. If you run it in constructed, uh, you're banned from my chat. Stone Rise Spirit, one in a white, flying, one, two. Exile a card from your graveyard. Target creature gains flying until end of turn. Limited card, but I like birds. So we're going to give it a one out of five in constructed. And this is an absolute villainous bird. I've never seen a bird be so chunky and so evil. Oh, I love this bird. Strict Proctor. I feel like I've just said a word that will get me banned from Twitch, but I guess, I guess as it turns out, we're allowed to say those words. Strict Proctor. One and a white. For a 1-3 Flying Spirit Cleric, whenever a permanent entering the battlefield causes a triggered ability to trigger counter that ability unless its controller pays two. Oh. I think Strict Proctor is kind of an interesting one. Okay, so, so there's been a number of cards that say things entering the battlefield don't cause things to trigger. Um, I don't even remember what the card, the original one that that is, but th these kinds of cards are always, always, always good. We, we're going to give this a sideboard out of five because it's fantastic. Um, there's probably going to be some nonsense where I can play like a Lotus Field and counter the sacrifice things. There's probably some other weird things where I could run like a Mardu list and play Croxa and then counter that with a Strict Proctor. <laughs> Um, ah, there's some weirdness here, but this is a good sideboard card. This is a good, 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 good sideboard, 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 sideboard card. Card, 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 card. Study Break. Oh my god, that's not what Study Break looks like. That's what Study Aim looks like. One in a white for an instant. Tap up the two target creatures. Learn. <laughs> I'm going to take a bite. Zero out of five. Here's the thing. Tapping creatures, not good, not relevant, and constructed. Um, yeah, not, this is very flimsy and constructed. The fact that it works in limited as a means to get you an extra card, I think this is a terrific limited card. I'd give it like a three, three, four, limited. Thunderous Orator. It's me! One in a white, Vigilance. Whenever Thunderous Order attacks against flying until end of turn, if you control a creature with flying, the same is true for First Strike, Double Strike, Death Touch, Indestructible, Life Blink, Man, it's Trample. Um, wow, I'm terrible. I'm horrible. I, I wouldn't run me. Are you kidding me? This is zero out of five. This is not good in the slightest period. It's terrible, and here's the reason why. It only gets that till end of turn and only if it attacks. That's it. That's it. That's it. It's a 2 2 with vigilance for two that can be a 2 2 with trample for two. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I think it's, I think it's like, I swear to God, I'm capable of so many keywords. No, you're not. You're a vigilant guy. Um, zero, zero out of five. Not good. Not good in the slightest. Okay, Wizard says, so good with Zatalpa. Ah, that's true. There's some nonsense right there. A world record has been achieved. We did white in an hour. We did it in an hour. I don't believe it. Normally, this stream takes eight hours. So we're going to get through the Uberg part, hopefully in five. And then we're going to be um, doing multicolored and artifact. Let's see, we've done, oh, we've done 36 out of 275. We're fucked. Okay. All right. We'll be here forever. May as well start eating now. It's a big leaf. Put this in the mouth, then I'm going to mute and chew it. Delicious. Let's plow onward. Arcane subtraction. One and a white for a target creature gets minus four, minus zero till end of turn. Is a limited card. You can learn. Yada, yada, yada. Archmage Emeritus. Beautiful art. Love it. Two and a pair of blues. Magecraft. Whenever you cast or copy an instant or sorcery spell, draw a card. Nice. Oh, yeah. Oh, huh. Oh, this is a really interesting one.
Hmm. Zero, the card's terrible. I had to stop and process it for a little bit. Four mana for a 2-2, begging to die. What are you going to do? Wait till turn five so I can opt. And then that way I use two cards to draw two cards. Blah. Really bad. Not good. Dies to stomp. Four mana, are you kidding me? I would rather just run a card that draws stuff, like Behold the Multiverse. That's how it's done. Um, Archmage Emeritus, certainly going to be an absolute beater, heater, monster eater in uh, Limited. But in Constructed, if you run this, it'll hurt you, it'll hurt me, it'll hurt your opponent. Your opponent will feel bad crushing you and just burying you with your poor decision making. Like, we're not going to want to run this one. Barag Bafadler. Sounds a lot like something a sim would say, isn't it? One in a blue for a flash 2-1 when Barag Bafadler enters the battlefield, target creature, and opponent controls gets minus one, minus zero until end of turn. This guy's like, I'm in a rogue deck. No, you're not. You're a frog wizard. Uh, this, this card's art is inspiring. So at the very least, I'm going to give it a 1 out of 5 in Constructed, even though it deserves a minus 1, minus 0 on that rating. Um, Barag Befuddler is not ever going to be good ever, ever in Constructed. It's a limited card. It's a little combat trick. You you pull it down, it puts its little sticky fingers. Oh my god. I don't know why this is just the only thing I look for in Anthropomorphic Frogs, but I always look and see if they have big wide fingertips you know what i'm saying it's those wide fingertips that all anthropomorphic frog artists are just like hmm there's something off can you just make the fingertips just like like spread like splay out a little bit more i want each one to feel like the bottom end of a fedora berry in books this art is weird four in a blue I assume that the library is under attack, so they're trying to bury in books. I'm like, no, I can't. I can't read. Oh. This spell costs two less to cast if it if it uh, targets an attacking creature. Put target creature on top of its owner's library, second from the top. Huh? So it's a three mana. Get out of here. Mm -mm. Mm -mm, mm -mm. This is a limited card. Uh, hmm. Curate one and a blue. Look at the top two cards of your library. Put any number of them into your graveyard and the rest back on top of your library in any order. Oh. This is pretty nice. This is actually pretty nice. I don't mind this one. I'm gonna give it a two. This is pretty good. Fucking eh, pretty good. Um, especially if there's some kind of stuff in your graveyards matter. Um, so surveil. Yeah, it looks it looks kind of like surveil. Uh, Omen of the surveil. Yeah, Deus Macarena. Damn right, Deus Macarena. Divide by zero. Two in a blue. Instant return target spell or permanent with mana value one or greater to its owner's hand. Learn. What? Wait. Return target spell or permanent. So first of all, what's mana value? Mana value is the replacement for converted mana cost. So for instance, if I have a Hydroid Crasis, when it is in the hand, its mana value is two because it's blue-green and X is zero in the hand. When it's on the stack, it's mana value as it's converted mana cost of like six. So for instance, if I have copied a spell, I don't remember if the copy's converted mana cost is the same. Um, return, just send it back. And you learn. People are saying it is, but a few seconds have passed, so my question has left my memory. Copies convert man causes the same as a spell. Thanks, Sage Arena. We will now take a bite.
is interesting. Um, I don't actually think this is very good. Uh, it's interesting because things it, it, it immediately harkens to a, um, not Aether Lens, uh, Aether Gust. Sorry, I played Dota a lot yesterday. Um, this harkens to Aether Gust, which is a two mana return target permanent either to the top or the bottom of the library. But the problem is it goes back to the hand. So that feels really bad. So why the hell would I run this? It buys a turn late. So maybe if someone casts a Ceratops, I can divide by zero to be like, no, please go back to your hand. And then they cast it the next turn and they, hey, zero. I don't wanna, I w I'm gonna divide this card by its rating, okay? I don't think this card is good at all. I'm not gonna run this. Donald Kratos says you run this for the flavor text. Misery, inadequacy, failure. The common denominator is you. You don't need to run a magic card to get this. Just browse any Twitter thread anywhere on Twitter about any topic with any collection of people participating. Um, Dream Strix, two out of blue uh, for a bird illusion, three and a two. Ooh, I already like the stats. A flying three, two for three. When Dream Strix becomes a target of a spell sacrifice, it, what? When Dream Strix dies, learn. Wow, a tough lesson for parakeet owners everywhere, huh? A bird illusion. I mean, you know, it's a 3-2 flyer for 3 that then draws a card when it dies. So far, all the lessons suck. Like, I would go to rate my professor and give Strixhaven zeros across the board, right? I don't like any of these lessons. Um, uh, I need to wait a little bit to find more, but again, a 3-2 flyer for 3 that when it dies, it draws a card... It's not bad. No, it's, it's not good, but it's not bad. And things that it's it's whenever it becomes a target of a spell. So often, the fact that it is the target of a spell at all, it, it's kind of irrelevant. Like if it's getting removed, it's getting removed. You can't buff it. Is really I think the best way to read this. So I'm gonna go ahead and give Birdman a one out of five, maybe a two out of five. I actually kind of like it in Constructive. I think it's I think it's a, it's a very good bird. And as you know, I'm a big bird fan. Frost Trickster, two and a blue. Oh my God, it's another bird wizard. I'm having a ball. A bird wizard, a two-two flyer. When Frost Trickster enters a battlefield, tap target creature an opponent controls. A creature doesn't untap during its controller's next untap step. Holy shit! I love it. I love it. I love it. In limited, I love it. I love it. I love it. I love it. I love it, I love it, I love it, I love it, I love it. I love this fucking card. This is an amazing limited card. Do you understand how many drafts I won with like four Frost Links? Oh my god, Frost Trickster is the... What an insanely good common. I'm going to be drafting in Strixhaven. God, this is so good. If you run this in Constructed, you're a fool. Ingenious Mastery, X, 2, and a blue. You may pay this rather than pay the cost. And if the cost is paid, you draw three cards. Then an opponent creates two treasure tokens and they scry two. If that cost wasn't paid, you draw X cards. Okay. Okay. I surmise, I surmise, if this card were instant speed, it would be hot plasma, I would give this 5 out of 5. It would be unbelievable. If Ingenious Mastery were 5, or were instant, it would be unbelievable. This is sorcery speed. And for that reason, I'm out. I'm going to give it a 0 out of 5. If it were instant, it would have been so good. Mm. It would have been unbelievable. Like, really, truly unbelievable. Drawing three cards, and then it's my turn and I can counter stuff. Oh! 
Oh, oh yes. Mm. I love it. I love it. I love it. But I can't. I can't. I can't do it at all. I can't do it. All right. Uh, Kelpie Guide. Two and a blue for a 2-2. Two -two. Untap another target permanent you control. Tap target permanent. Activate only if you control eight or more lands. It's blue ramp. It's bad. <laughs> you don't want to run a three mana ramper. What are you talking about? Like, first of all, if you are in any non-standard constructed format, you're running like a mind stone. Okay. We don't want to run a creature that's like looking like Mr. Glass over here. No, Kelpie Guide. Can't helpy the Kelpie. I'm going to give it a zero. Mentor's Guidance, two and a blue sorcery. When you cast a spell, copy it if you control a planeswalker, cleric, druid, shaman, warlock, or wizard. <laughs> shaman and druid sneaking in there, and warriors are like, no! Scry one, then draw a card. Huh. Huh. Interesting. It's sorcery speed. Huh. I don't know, man. I don't know. I don't know at all. This is a weird one. And anytime I see something strange, I don't know. I'm having I'm having revulsion. Um, mm, um, I'd rather run opt. You know what I mean? I'd rather run opt. Because it's scry one, draw one. But maybe you can cast it twice with conditions? Yeah, no, it's a zero out of five. It's, it's a limited card. Mercurial Transformation, one in a blue. <laughs> oh my god. This is, this is, this is you, and this is your Dota MMR, and you're wondering why it hasn't gone up. But I, I'm, I'm doing all the things that BSJ said. I, I, I don't understand. This is, this is me and the deck that I net decked. Why am I still stuck in time? I don't understand. Until end of turn, target non-land permanent, loses all abilities, and becomes your choice of a blue frog creature with base power and toughness 1-1, one, one, or a blue octopus creature with base time, power and toughness 4-4. Four, four. Great limited card. Terrible constructed card. You don't, like, all these frogifications and l lizard odrifies, you know, it's like kind of a cool blue theme. I'm going to turn you into a crab and all this shit. Um, but the thing is... Um, you'd rather run a counter spell and construct it if you're blue. You'd rather run blue for card draw and a sweep ring effect instead of actually dealing with it directly when it's blue. And of course, it's sorcery speed. Absolutely not. However, in limited, this is very, 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 very good. You like that, and it is tight. Let me just make sure. Oh, it's until end of turn. Ooh, it's even worse than I thought. I don't even like it. Don't even like it that much. Multiple choice X and blue. If X is 1, scry 1, draw. If X is 2, choose a player. They return a creature they control to understand. If X is 3, create a 4-4 four, four blue and red elemental creature token. If X is 4 or more, do all the above. Oh, wait a minute. Wait a minute. Hold, stay here. The design of this is 5 out of 5. Multiple choice is so good. So if X is 1, scry 1, draw 1. If X is 2, they bounce a thing. So this is a spend 2 to do a 1 mana effect. Spend 3 to do a 2 mana effect. Spend 4 to do 3.5 mana effect. Spend 5 to do a lot. Yeah, Caffeine Cafe says there seems to be a lack of instant speed thing so far. Yes! Yes, 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 yes. It's sorcery speed zero. Zero. Zero, 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 zero. The answer to the multiple choice test is why do I need to take a test to get certification? I could just do the thing and have a portfolio. Ah, spoken like an artist. Yeah, what is this garbage? Ah, oh, I'm done with multiple choice. I'm not doing it anymore. No, 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 sir. Mm-mm. It's just that it's sorcery. I don't like the inflexibility of a sorcery speed thing. All right. Instant pop quiz. Two and a blue. Draw a card. Learn. No. Mm -mm. You want to behold the multiverse. You want 
And op, yeah, zero. Zero, zero, zero. Zero. It's just zero. This is, this is like a limited card, right? Because you draw a card from your deck and you put a learn card from outside, um, from your sideboard into the thing. It's like, it's no. It's no. Oh, I, I will say, this facial expression is really good. This captures the feeling of being in a school for sure. Oh, pop quiz. Oh, God. Uh, can I say I loved pop quizzes? As a kid, I loved pop quizzes. Loved them. Absolutely adored them. Mm -mm -mm. Reject. Ooh, is that how that works now? Oh my god, stamped right on the forehead? Uh-oh. I have an ever-growing forehead, thanks to <laughs> male pattern baldness. One in a blue, instant, counter-target creature or planeswalker spell, unless it's controller pays three. If that spell's countered, exile it instead of putting it into its owner's graveyard. Great. Oh, you know, I, I, I read it as reject, but I think it's reject. For any of you that are unfamiliar, reject is the noun. Reject is the verb. Because English is stupid. <laughs> so this is reject. Um, incredible. It's incredible. This is an absolutely astoundingly incredible card. This is a five out of five. This is our first. This is our first sincere five. Absolutely, our first sincere five. You know what I'm saying? Like this is a, just a spectacular card. This is basically a better essence scatter. I mean, this is. I mean, it's like fuck six out of five. This is an insane card. Here's the thing: control mages. You want to focus around the two mana slot in constructed. Unless you're playing modern, then you want to focus around your bullshit, because that's what your deck is. Oh, I, oh you want to focus on anything that makes you fucking do this shit, right? Uh, but if you're looking at standard, the two mana slot is like the thing, right? Two mana is really value. Um, it's really easy to look at a flexible counter spell that's at three. Something like an absorb, something like an ionize. But really... The two mana things for things like Disdainful Stroke, Negate, Essence Scatter, these are the archetypical good shit. But then Reject comes along and also Exiles, great for things like Graveyard Interactive Creatures, like Croxa, like Skyclave Shade, like um, I can do this on my own, I don't need any help. It's the 3-2. It's the it's the three two that sacrifices and scries, and he's all hunched like this. I have to look. What's the name of it? The hunched three two. The whoa, Strider. Fuck. What is with my brain and names today? Everything is wrong. This card's very very good. Resculpt. Ah, yes, exactly what we're all going to do with our bodies once the gyms are open and the vaccines have been inserted directly into our foreheads. One and a blue exile target artifact or creature. Its controller creates an extremely powerful blue and red elemental creature token. That's what I'm going to be, baby. I'm going to be a 4-4 blue and red elemental creature token. You're going to be like, oh, he's hot, hot, hot. But when I talk to him, he's so cold, cold, cold. That's very on, on brand with the colors. Um, I mean, it's very clearly a terrible constructed card, uh, but, you know, it seems kind of like a little bit like a fun thing, a little bit like a fun card. Um, you know, I think it's really, 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 really bad. Um, I think it's terrible. It's a 4-4 four, four for two. It isn't a 4-4 four, four for two, unfortunately. It's a discard a card and make a 4-4 four, four for two. <laughs> Yeah, I mean this. This seems like uh, this is the worst card that's ever been printed. Actually, this is it. This is this is the the rock bottom. It's really good to know that before we even got to the B part of Wooberg, that we truly found the worst card in the set. This is fantastic. Um, this is a this is a very very yeah. Here's the thing: if you target an enemy card, they get a four four. That doesn't feel very good. You spent a card and then they have a four four. Mm mm. Um. Uh, you have to, if you do it to yourself, you have to kill one of your things, and it's exile, it's not kill. Not a chance. I think the only circumstance in which I see this having any merit at all whatsoever is if 
you are in limited, and your opponent plays a very, very big and scary creature, like a 7-7 from heaven that we haven't even seen yet. You can exile it and turn it into a less threatening thing. Exile treasure tokens. I'd rather use the treasure tokens than run this. You know what I mean? Yeah. Don't like it. It's great versus Clackbridge Troll. We found the interaction. Serpentine Curve. Can I just say that, by the way, that's, I think, the only time I've ever been wrong. Only time I've ever been wrong in a review, ever, ever, was that I thought Clackbridge Troll was going to be incredible. Incredible. And I've never seen it. I don't even think I've put it in a deck. Yeah, oh, was it Omnath, Duke? No, I was right on Omnath. If I recall, I gave Omnath a 1 out of 5. And the only way in which I was wrong is that it should have been rated a 0 out of 5. Because you don't even see it played and constructed anymore. Um, I can't believe Clackbridge Troll was not a thing. I can't believe it. I'm going to try to make a deck with that nonsense. Here we go. Serpentine Curve. 3 and a blue sorcery. Created 0, 0, green and blue fractal creature token. Put X plus 1 plus 1 counters on it. Where X is 1 plus the total number of instant sorcery cards you own in exile and in your graveyard. Ha! Huh. It's a sorcery speed huge boy. Good and limited. Bad and constructed because it's just a big one. That's it. Why run Serpentine Curve? Which is like a conditional, circumstantial, potentially big boy when I could put down... A wall of text known as a questing uh, beast. I wish instead of Serpentine Curve, it was actually just called Fractal Alligator. And instead of arms and legs, it was just more alligators. Like, that's what I want to see, man. Um, so I think that for this reason, Serpentine Curve is going to be a zero out of zero in Constructed. Snow Day! All right, uh, pop quiz while I take a bite of this beautiful, delicious lunch. Homemade shredded chicken salad. Okay. What kind of weather causes school to get canceled? It's blank weather. This is a quiz. This is if you lived in the Midwest in America. Hmm. That's right. It's inclement. Sarah Angela right out the gate with inclement. That's right. Inclement weather. That's right. Stoney says tornado. School is canceled because there's tornado weather. No one even speaks like that. But I do now. I'm very concerned. I'm very concerned about tornado weather. And if we go visit Bali, I'm concerned about volcano weather. Snow day. Four and two blue for an instant. It's an instant! Already it's the best card we've seen. Tap up the two target creatures. Those creatures are unbelievably cold. Draw two cards, then discard a card. What? No. Zero out of five in Constructed. You had me so excited with Instant. What is this doing here? The rest of it's going to be a disappointment. Oh my god. That's like, hey, this has a free cup holder. I'm like, oh, that's pretty good. On the toaster. What? Why does it need a cup holder? I don't understand it. This is terrible. Six mana. Six mana to cast a spell and feel like this person and that person, man. Yuck. Joe Locks is such a roller coaster of a card. That's the truth. That is the truth and a half right there, man. This card is so. Mm, mm, I can't wait to get the multicolored cards because I think that what like the I believe that Wooberg order is just the zero one two three four and then multicolored is the five out of five of ratings. Uh, by the way, and I think that's the order of my bias too. I think that's nearly the exact order of my bias. Solve the equation. Ooh, I'm gonna like this one. Two and a blue. Search your library for an instant. Sorcery. Reveal it. Put it in your hand and shuffle. I think that this card should be renamed to get the thing. Now, I don't work in um, any of like creative writing or creative direction, but I think get the thing is what this thing does. This doesn't solve the equation. You just get the, get the thing. Search for an answer. <laughs> Dig for truth. Um, find exactly what you need and put it into your hand at sorcery speed. I think what I would rather do is get a toaster with a cup holder. I'm going to give this a 0 out of 5. Soothe, say, or adapt 1 and a blue for someone who uh, is really excited to have recently installed an Amazon Fire Stick on their giant water bubble. 
I am summoning this so I can grind the office. One in a blue, draw a card, then discard a card. Oh, it's you again. Welcome back. Hi, I'm I'm the one that draws and then discards. I'm a card that you do as your 13th pick and draft. It's good to be here again. If you need me, I'll be just hitting the watch anything button on Netflix. <laughs> I wish... Do you, Have you guys seen this thing? Okay, so in Netflix, first of all, when you log into Netflix... It has a whole bunch of categorizations that are a mix of way too broad, like action adventure, and then way too specific, like visually striking puppet based dramas. You know, something like uh, a sports thriller period piece starring Nicolas Cage, and there's like 40 of them. So, um, as a result, I tend to open up Netflix and I just grind and grind and grind and grind, and it's, I actually find it fun to just spend 30 minutes looking for something to watch and then putting it down and playing Dota. And that's kind of how I've been consuming a lot of stuff lately. Go ahead. No. no just feel free to go. I'm, I'm, I'm in the middle of something, but it's fine. Feel free to just... Good. And what happened is uh, Netflix recently induced something, which is play something. You hit the button, and it's just something's on. Right? <laughs> like, it's... <laughs> and, and, and I really feel like... It should instead be called I Give Up. I really... That's the use case! Is I feel like I'm on here. I'm like, well, maybe this. Maybe this. I don't... Ugh, I give up. Just I should hit the button. And it's just like, don't worry about it, man. We got you. And in fact, I actually theorize that in about three months, Netflix will actually modify this button to where it doesn't even start an episode. Instead, it will begin six minutes into an episode of something just so there's already... Because let me tell you something. Whenever I see a long intro sequence where it has, like, directed by so-and-so productions, so-and-so studios, so-and-so entertainment, because there's, like, 40 different production studios, one of which is profitable, but they all want to list their fucking name because it's the only thing that they have, right? Has this, and then it shows, like, a slow-moving pan of a... Of a, of a cityscape and there's like neon lights and a cab rolls up and a foot steps out and we're three minutes in and I just turn it off. Do, do you do this? Am I crazy? I know I'm like particularly apathetic and weird ever since being in quarantine, but like the starts of these shows need to just get me past the intro to the start. I want to hit play and have someone be like, John's been murdered and we need to solve it. And I'm like, great. Great! This is the thing. This is why I like books more than movies. Because you open up a book and it's just, there's shit happening like immediately. I don't open a book and it's just like, and in, in fucking this production, this entertainment, like this 40 pages of trying to get past bibliographies. There's none of that nonsense, you know? Anyways. Soothsayer Adept sucks is really what I'm trying to say. Symmetry Sage, one blue for a flying 0-2 with Magecraft. Whenever you cast or copy an instant or sorcery spell, target creature you control has base power 2 until end of turn. Oh. Oh. Prince Odrod says there's a skip intro button. No, no, I'm not saying skip the title sequence. I mean, we're past the title sequence, and the movie or the TV show has four minutes of filler bullshit nonsense in the first episode, because they want to let me know everyone who's participating. They want to show these establishing shots that don't mean anything to me because I've never seen your shit. You know what I mean? Oh. Yeah, see, a a Hassler, you're right. You, I want to skip to hook button. I want the hook. I want the hook. Symmetry Sage. So this is a 0-2 for 1 that allows you to cast stuff and become a 2-2. Two -two. What a bizarre kind of creature, because technically a 2-2 flyer for 2 is good, but in blue, you want to be a little bit careful, because when will I, will I ever want to have this thing have 2 power? You want to do it when you're on the attack. Um, and so, Symmetry Sage, I feel like I have to give her a 3 out of 5 just for the hair. That's good hair. I mean, look at look at look at just these cabbage holders on either side. I mean, those are that's a that's an amazing hairdo. Um, yeah, I'll give it a three out of five. I think that it's possibly good. There are some on curve Azorius flyer lists that have been like tier three. 
Not a tier one deck, not a tier two, but like a, like a tier three, like like sometimes get wins at, out of nowhere, like a rally of wings. Whoa, wow. I, I, yeah, 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 yeah. I, I, I. Teachings of the Archaics, two and a blue. Wow. I wonder where that guy puts his armies in his sleeveys. It's kind of weird to do the joke where you have spoiled the punchline at the start of it, but really that's kind of avant-garde content is why you're here. Teachings of the Archaics, two and a blue for a sorcery lesson. If an opponent has more cards in hand than you, draw two cards. Draw three cards instead if an opponent has at least four more cards in hand than you. Oh my god. It's actually not a terrible lesson. <gasps> you ever noticed anytime someone says, I hope that so-and-so learned their lesson, what they really mean to say is, I am pleased that that person was in pain. I, I never really liked that. I've never heard anyone say that in a positive way, right? Like, hey, I was really having a hard time beating this Roach Rush in PVZ, but I'm finally consistently holding it. Well, hey, I'm really glad you learned your lesson. No one has ever said that like that. It'd be like, well, I brought John some popsicles because I thought he liked popsicles, but when he looked at it, he began to vomit uncontrollably. Well, Sean, I hope you learned your lesson. You know, like, I don't know. I, I think there's something that's mentally that I associate lesson with something negative. Tutorial, positive feeling. Lesson, negative feeling. You know what I mean? I think this card's great. I think this card is terrific. I love this card. Because it makes me want to do some sort of weird Azorius aggro list with something like the Symmetry Sage and not this card. <laughs> um, <laughs> I actually hit it twice. Uh, Symmetry Sage and like teaching to your case, right? You just smash down a bunch of one mana things. I don't know, maybe something like the Lulubi Mommy to mage craft it up. And then, um, God, this this art is some of the best ever and reminds me that I need to replay Shadow of the Colossus because Blue Point is an amazing company. But Teachings of the Archaic seems seems pretty tight. Seems pretty tight. Seems pretty great. Seems pretty nifty. Um, I'd give it a three. I'd give it a three. I think this is, this is up there. Tempted by the Orc. Not the Oracle, but the Orc. One a blue and a blue and a blue for each opponent. Gain control of up to one target creature or planeswalker. That player controls with mana value three or less. And the commander players. Oh, popping out from behind bushes. Oh my gosh, from the shadows a Russell stirs and a commander player. Not even with a deck box, just with a loose pile of 100 cards. Oh, I'm, I have 99 cards. I've been looking for the 100th card. Do you have attempted by the Auric? Yeah, sure. For each opponent, snatch stuff. This is not that nifty in... Constructed, I don't think. But, however, I will say, um, Snatching of the Lull Mage, I don't remember what the card is, but it's blue, 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 and an X, which is nab a thing. I actually think that Tempted by the Auric could be a very valuable sideboard card in Constructed. I really do think so, because there's often X cost, Hydroid Crisis, things like this. What is it called, Snatching of the Lull Mage? Lull Mage's Domination? Lull Mage's Domination, thank you. Thank you, Shadow Cat. Five out of five. Right to you, Shadow Cat. Finger guns. Tempted by the Auric. Uh, I actually think it has some merit. I'd give it a two out of five. I'd give it a sideboard out of five in Constructed. Zooming along. Test of talents. One in a blue. Instant. Counter target. Instant or sorcery spell. Search its controller's graveyard, hand, and library for any number of cards with the same name as that spell and exile them. That player shuffles, then draws a card for each card exiled from their hand this way. Oh, fuck. It's a negative one million out of ten. Okay? Do you understand me? I'm not I'm not putting up with this garbage. Mm-mm. Uh uh. This is not it. This is not this card sucks. I'd rather have a negate. You know what I'm saying? I'd rather have it. Now, you might be saying, but wait, Sean, but wait, hold on, Sean, I have a circumstance that I could bring up in gameplay, and I want you to respond to my gameplay evaluation. No, 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 this card 
is the worst card that Wizards have ever printed, and let me explain why. You constantly tell me to run Unmoored Ego. Oh my god, Day 9, you can just look at all their stuff and the card that's good, it's gone now. Ignoring the fact that they redraw the cards when you cast it. Oh, Day 9, Necromentia. Oh, you look in their deck and you remove the card and it's good, it's gone now. If you don't know what these cards are, there's cards like Unmoored Ego Necromentia that basically say... Look in their hand, delete the card in their hand, delete all the copies in the deck, and then they get something. So in other words, I spent a card. She just says, why are we Kermit? I don't know. I, I'm fucking invent the way that you talk. You're the one that talks that way. Anyways. Oh my god. He's just, he's so accosting. Um, cards like Unmoored Ego exile all these cards, and then they redraw. Or Necromentia exiles all these cards and they get two twos and things like this. These cards are so tempting because your brain goes, how do I deal with Questing Beasts? Well, if my opponent literally was never able to cast one, two thumbs up. How do I deal with Emergent Ultimatum? Well, if my opponent got all of them exiled from their deck, they could never do it. Ah. Now, Test of the Talents does counter an instant or sorcery spell, right? So we can just have it counter something. And we search the graveyard hand library for all the cards with the same ones and exile it. That, uh, that player shuffles, then draws a card for each card exiled just from their hand. So if they have all four copies in the graveyard, or excuse me, three copies in the graveyard, you counter the one on the stack, three in the, three in the graveyard, um, you, they wouldn't draw any. But like if you countered an immersion ultimatum in the hand and they had an immersion ultimatum also in the hand, the one you countered on the stack, Cool, it's gone. The one in the hand, they redraw. Um, so, I mean, this in my eyes is a, an upcoming nightmare. Because what I'm going to have to do is I'm going to have to like explain why I shouldn't be running Test of Talents a thousand times. I'm going to be like, oh, here's a powerful blue dragon. Let's put one of these in. D9, what do you think about running a Test of Talents? I don't think about it because I like running good cards. I can't stand these cards that, as a broadcaster, I have to constantly re-explain myself over and over and over and over and over again. You know what the worst part is? I like this card better than Unmoored Ego and Necromentia. Okay? Okay? This is the new bag of holding. But D9, imagine a world where your bag of holding holds the entire deck. I don't know, man. I don't. I can't stand this fucking card. I'm so. I'm so mad at you. Does it ever happen to you that like <laughs> you have like misplaced anger, where like you see someone order something with blue cheese, and it reminds you of someone who was mean to you that liked blue cheese, and all of a sudden you're mad at this blue cheese eating fucking asshole. That's me right now. None of you said anything. However, you're gonna, and you have in the past, and it's because of this card. Negative 1,000 out of 5. Don't you dare ever bring up Test the Talents to me. And of course, there's people who are cracking their knuckles. I'm going to spend channel points to say this every time. God, well, we're going to need to change the moderation policy. Anytime someone uses Test, Talents, or Of, they immediately get banned from the channel. Ugh. Okay. Here's my more honest evaluation of the card. I think that there is merit to saying, hey, we might want to run some of these in the sideboard, probably not in the main board. Negate is, on average, a substantially more powerful card because negate says target non-creature. This says counter target instant or sorcery. Negate hits artifacts, enchantments, planeswalkers, instants and sorceries. The only thing it doesn't hit is creatures, hence non-creature. That's how the word works. So um, I really think that Test of Talents being so narrow as to hit only instants and sorceries runs the risk of being quite dead. Um, if someone were to cast a Binding of the Old Gods in a situation where I very wanted to not let that get cast, Test of Talents doesn't do this. Um, so yeah, that, 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 like that's my honest valuation why I think the Test of Talents is at best a sideboard card. So that's it. Power Maul, gifting five. Power Maul, are you going to try to get me to re-roll this? Are you going to try to get me to re-roll my rating of this? Is that why you are 
Oh my god. Oh, you want to reroll, Power Mall? Alright. Uh, let me do a quick audio thing here. Hey, is the audio synchronization better or worse? Ghost Stalker had to go. And I'm going to fix this problem one day, but certainly not today. How does it look? How does it look? Seems good? Better? Yeah. Great. Thanks, everyone. Oh, my God. I need to tell you why Test of Talents is the best card ever printed. Instants and sorceries are spells commonly cast in the game of Magic the Gathering, and this prevents your opponent from casting one. Already a sensational effect. However, I've been recently watching Day 9's Tybalt's Trickery List, and what I've determined is that countering your own shit is a viable solution to Mythic. And so imagine Test of Talents. I don't even need to worry about my opponent ever casting a spell. I can have all the instances and sorceries myself. And when I counter it, if I have a handful of duplicate copies of that card, then I get to redraw away. It's just an undefeatable solution. It's a 5 out of 5. This card is conducive to boners. Are you happy, Power Mall? Are you pleased that you got me to reroll this? Oh my god. I can keep going. Guys, the best part about Historic is that I can have Necromentia and Unmoored Ego, and then over here, I can use Test of Talents. Wait a minute. I don't even need to use the left hand. It's okay. I freed it up for this. Test of Talents. We can have a deck where all we do is delete shit from the opponent's deck. And then when our opponents have redrawn a full hand, summoned a bunch of 2-2 zombies, and have won... I sure feel validated in my deck building capacities. This card is just okay. All right, this card is just okay. Is it good? No. No, it fuck. I'm so mad at you again. I'm I can feel my heart rate. My face is hot right now, okay? And I don't mean physically attractive. I know what I look like. Like, I can feel the anger because I'm going to have to have this fucking conversation so much. i got to get this card off my screen. Get it off my screen. Why is my keyboard not working? Oh, Jesus. It's just okay. Look, this card is just... Oh, my God. This card, it's, it's very narrow. Is it amazing? No. Will it have amazing moments? Yes. If you overuse it, will it be bad? Yes. Sean, yes or no? No. All right. <laughs> it's my favorite thing I've said today. That's <laughs> that's a good joke. That's a very good joke. It's a very good joke. <laughs> Vortex Runner. Power Mall says worth every penny. If Ghost Darker was here, you'd be out of here in a heartbeat, Power Mall. You don't. You be careful. Watch yourself. Vortex Runner. Two and a blue. Oh, look, it's someone coming in here to ask for troll ratings. I came from a portal through reality to get you to re-rate Test of Talents. As long as you control eight or more lands, Vortex Runner gets plus one, plus zero, and can't be blocked. Okay, that's a, that's a limited card. It's not a constructed card. Waterfall Aerialist. Oh, my God. This is beautiful. Oh my god, three and a blue for a flying Ward 2? Okay, Ward 2 is a new mechanic, and it's a new evergreen mechanic, actually. Whenever this creature becomes the target of a spell or ability an opponent controls, counter it unless that player pays two. This is really nice. So, um, the ward effect. Not the card. The card's total dog shit. Um, Waterfall Aerialist, this Ward 2, is kind of like, I can be a cheap creature that has cheap creature properties, but Ward makes it more resilient to efficient removal spells. Um, uh, and Joe Lux says, what's an evergreen mechanic? Evergreen is, it's in every set for magic. Um, uh, yeah, evergreen is like flying. In every set there's flying. Lifelink, in every set there's lifelink. Um, trample, in every set there's trample. Hey Des, what are you doing? Are you hunting a bug? She's hunting a bug, and now she's chewing on a box. Um, this card, it's just overcosted for what it does. It's a 3-1 flyer with Ward 2. 
I would prefer that this be cheaper to be run in constructed. I, actually, it should be two mana for me to want to run it in constructed. But in limited, it's a 3-1 flyer that's hard to interact with. That seems good. Wormhole Serpent. Oh my god, yes. Ah, Wormhole Serpent. Magic's biggest fan of only fans. Four and a blue. He's peeking at you. Target creature can't be blocked this turn. Ooh, that's cheap unblockability effect. That's actually really good in limited. Zero and constructed, but I think this is a fine card to have as a one of. I, I really like this is really nicely statted. Often a lot of the serpents are like super expensive and stuff. Or the unblockability things are super expensive, but this is really nice. <gasps> Arrogant poet. It's you! This is you. Welcome to the review of the black cards. Here we go. We've been live doing reviews for an hour and 40 minutes. We've gone through two colors, and we'll be here till midnight. 